Okay, hi everyone, welcome to this new video series. Um, this video series will be covering um, Windows Server 2012. Planning the Windows Server 2012 R2 installation. Before you install Windows Server 2012 R2, you must first ask yourself um, these important questions. What type of server do I need? Will the server be a domain controller? What roles do I need to install on this server? Once you have figured out what you need the server to do, <laughs> you can make a game plan for the installation. So let's start by looking at some of the server roles and technologies that can be installed on a Windows Server 2012 R2 computer. Server roles in Windows Server 2012 R2. When you install Windows Server 2012 R2, you decide which roles and features are going to be installed onto that server. This is an important decision in the computer world. Many administrators not only overuse a server, but also underutilize servers in their organization. For example, many administrators refuse to put any other roles or features on a domain controller. This may not be a good use of a server. Domain controllers help authenticate users onto the network. But after that, domain controllers um, are really not very busy all day long. Domain controllers have tasks that they must perform all day, but the server on which they reside is not heavily used when compared to an SQL server machine or an exchange mail server. This is where monitoring your server can be useful. Now let's take a look at some of the roles and features you can install on a Windows Server 2012 machine, knowing the different roles and features you can install, you can install will help you to design, deploy, manage, and troubleshoot technologies in Windows Server 2012 or two. Figure 1-1 one, one shows the Add Roles and Features Wizard in Server Manager. It shows you just some of the roles that can be installed on a Windows Server 2012 R2 machine. The following roles are available in Windows Server 2012 R2. Active Directory Certificate Services. The ADCS server role in Windows Server 2012 R2 allows you to build a PKI and provide public key cryptography, digital certificates, and digital signature capabilities for your organization. Feature. Feature AD um, CS provides a customizable set of services that allows you to issue and manage PKI certificates. These certificates, these certificates can be used in software um, security systems that deploy public key technologies, role ADCS. <clears throat> in Windows Server 2012 R2, in the server role, that allows you to build a PKI and provide public key, public key cryptography, digital certificates, and digital signature capabilities for your organization, Active Directory Domain Services. The AD um ds server role allows you to create a scalable secure and manageable infrastructure for user and resource management and to provide support for directory enabled applications such as microsoft exchange server active directory federation services adfs provides internet-based clients with a secure identity um, access solution that works on both Windows and non-Windows operating systems. ADFS gives users the ability to do a single sign-on SSO and access applications on other networks without needing a secondary password. Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services AD LDS is a lightweight directory access protocol LDAP directory service that provides flexible support for directory enabled applications without the dependency and domain related restrictions of ADDS Active Directory Rights Management Services ADRMS 
in Windows Server 2012 or 2 is the server role that provides you with management and deployment tools that work with the industry security technologies, including encryption certificates and authentication to help organizations create reliable information protection solutions. Application Server provides an integrated environment for deploying and running custom server-based business applications, failover clustering. The failover clustering feature provides a way to create, configure, and manage failover clusters for up to 4,000 virtual machines or up to 64 physical nodes. File and storage services allow an administrator to set up and manage one or more file servers. These servers can provide central location on your network where you can store files and then share those files with network users. If users require access to the same files and applications, or if centralized backup and file management are important issues for your organization, administrators should set up network servers and a file server. Rule policy. Group policies are a set of rules and management configuration options that you can control through the group policy settings. These policy settings can be placed on users' computers throughout the organization, Hyper-V. The Hyper-V role allows administrators to create and manage a virtualized environment by taking advantage of the technology built into Windows Server 2012 or 2 operating system. When an administrator installs the Hyper-V role, all required virtualization components are installed. Some of the required components include the Windows Hypervisor, Virtual Machine Management Server, the Virtualization WMI Provider, the Virtual Machine Bus VM Bus, the Virtualization Service Provider VSP, and the Virtual Infrastructure Driver VID. Networking. This feature allows administrators to design, deploy, and maintain a Windows Server 2012 or 2 network. The networking features include 802.1x, authentication, wired and wireless access, branch cache, data center bridging, low latency, workload technologies, and many more. Network load balancing. The network load balancing, NLB, feature dispenses traffic across multiple servers by using the TCP IP networking protocol. By combining two or more computers that are running applications in Windows Server 2012 or two into a single virtual cluster, NLB provides reliability and performance for mission critical servers. Network policy and access services. Use the network policy and access server sorry use the network policy and access services server rule to install and configure network access protection nap secure wired and wireless access points and radius servers and proxies print and document services allows an administrator to centralize print server and network printer tasks this rule also allows you to receive scanned documents from network scanners and route the documents to a shared network resource. Windows SharePoint services site or email address print and document services also provides fax servers with the ability to send and receive faxes while also giving the administrator the ability to manage fax resources such as jobs, settings, reports, and fax devices on a fax server. Remote desktop services allows for faster desktop and application deployments to any device, improving remote user effectiveness while helping to keep critical data secure. Remote desktop services allows for both virtual desktop infrastructure, VDI, and session-based desktops, allowing users to connect from anywhere, security and protection. Windows Server 2012 has many new and improved security features for your organization. These security features include access control, app locker, bit locker, potential locker, Kerberos, 
MTLM password security auditing smart cards and Windows biometric framework WBF. Telemetry. The telemetry service allows the Windows feedback forwarder to send feedback to Microsoft automatically by deploying a group policy setting to one or more organizational units. Windows feedback forwarder is available on all editions of Windows Server 2012 or 2, including Server Core. Volume activation. Windows Server 2012 or 2 volume activation will help your organization benefit from using this service to deploy and manage volume licenses for a medium to large number of computers. The web service IIS role um, in Windows Server 2012 or 2 allows an administrator to set up a secure, easy to manage, modular and extensible platform for reliably hosting websites services and applications. Windows deployment services allows an administrator to install a Windows operating system over the network. Administrators do not have to install each operating system directly from a CD or DVD, the Windows server backup. This, sorry, feature gives an organization a way to back up and restore Windows servers. You can use Windows Server Backup to back up the entire server, all volumes, selected volumes, system state, or specific files and folders. Windows Update Services, WSUS, allows administrators to deploy application and operating system updates by deploying, by deploying, deploying WS US administrators have the ability to manage updates that are released through Microsoft Update to computers into their network. This feature is integrated with the operating system as a server role on Windows Server 2012 or 2 system. Migrating roles and features in Windows Server 2012 or 2. Once you decide which roles and features you're going to install, onto your Windows Server 2012 or 2 system. Then you either have to install those roles and features from scratch or migrate them from a previous version of Windows Server. Windows Server 2012 or 2 includes a set of migration tools that administrators can use to help ease the process of migrating server roles, features, operating system settings and data. Administrators can migrate this data from existing server that is running Windows Server 2003, Windows Server 2003 or 2, Windows Server 2008, Windows Server 2008 or 2, or Windows Server 2012 or 2, to a computer that is running Windows Server 2012 or 2. Using Windows Server migration tools to migrate roles, role services and features can simply can simplify the deployment of new servers. You can migrate roles and features on a server running the server core installation option on Windows Server 2012 or 2 and virtual servers. By using Windows Server migration tools, an administrator can reduce migration downtime, increase the accuracy of the migration process and help eliminate conflicts that could otherwise occur during the migration process. One advantage of using the migration tools is that most of them support cross-architecture migrations, x86 based to x64 based computing platforms. Migrations between physical and virtual environments and migrations between both full and server core installation options of the Windows Server operating system in Windows Server 2012 or 2. Windows Server migration tools, tools also support cross subnet migrations. To use Windows Server migration tools, the feature must be installed on both the source and destination computers. Windows Server migration tools, installation and preparation can be divided into the following stages. One, installing Windows Server migration tools on destination services on destination servers that run Windows Server 2012 or 2. Two, 
creating deployment boulders on destination servers that run Windows Server 2012 or two for copying to source servers three. Copying deployment folders from destination servers to source servers four. Registering Windows Server migration tools on source servers. If you plan to use Windows Server migration tools, you must be a member of the administrators group on both the source and destination servers to install, remove or set up the tools. Administrators can install Windows Server migration tools by using either the add roles or features wizard in server manager or windows powershell deployment cmd lets for server manager to install windows server migration tools on a server core installation of windows server 2012 or two you would complete the following steps one open a windows powershell session by typing powershell.exe in the current command prompt session and then pressing enter two in the Windows PowerShell session, install Windows Server migration tools by using the Windows PowerShell install Windows feature CMD let for server manager. In the Windows PowerShell session, type the following and then press enter. Omit the computer name parameter if you're installing the Windows Server migration tools on the local server. Install Windows feature migration computer name computer name, roles and features that have been reduced in Windows Server 2012 or two. One thing that we want to look at is which roles and features are being deprecated or removed from Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 or two. Table 1.1 was taken directly from Microsoft's website httptechnet.microsoft.com enus library dn3034111.ap sorry dot .ap, aspx and this table may change at any time thus i would recommend that you go to microsoft's website to see the current list and roles and features table 11 1 sorry table 1 1 lists features and functionalities in Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 or two that have either been removed from the product release or are planned for potential removing, removal in subsequent releases shown as deprecated. So I'm not going to read all this, but I'll just leave it up for a minute so you can have a quick look. Okay, deciding which Windows Server 2012 R2 version to use. You may be wondering which version of Windows Server 2012 R2 is best for your organization. After all, Microsoft offers the following four versions of Windows Server 2012 R2. Windows 2012 R2 Data Center. This version is designed for organizations that are looking to migrate to a highly virtualized private cloud environment. Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center has full Windows Server functionality with unlimited virtual instances. Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard. This version is designed for organizations with physical or minimally and virtualized environments. Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard has full Windows Server functionality with two virtual instances. Windows Server 2012 or two essentials. This version is ideal for small businesses that have, that have as many as 25 users and 50 devices. <clears throat> Windows Server 2012 or two essentials has a simpler interface and pre-configured connectivity to cloud-based services, but no virtualization rights. Windows Server 2012 or 2 Foundation. Um, this version is designed for smaller companies that need a Windows Server experience 
for as few as 15 users. Windows Server 2012 R2 Foundation is a general purpose server with basic functionality, but no virtualization rights. Once you choose what roles are going to be on your server, you must then decide how you're going to install Windows Server 2012 or two. There are two ways to install Windows Server 2012 or two. You can upgrade a Windows Server 2008 or two with SP1, which is Service Pack, or Windows Server 2012 machine to a Windows Server 2012 or two, or you can do a clean install of Windows Server 2012 um, or two. Um, if you decide that you're going to upgrade, there are specific upgrade paths you must follow. Um, your choice of Windows Server 2012 or two version is dictated by how your current network is designed. If you are building a network from scratch, then it's pretty straightforward. Just choose the Windows Server 2012 or two version based on your server's tasks. However, if you already have a version of Windows Server 2008 installed, you should follow the recommendations in table one, two, which briefly summarize the supported upgrade paths to Windows Server 2012 R2. Table one, two, supported Windows Server 2012 R2 upgrade path recommendations. But I'll just go through these quickly. Current operating system, upgraded system. Windows Server 2008 R2 data center with SP1, Windows Server 2012 R2 data center, Windows Server 2008 R2 enterprise with SP1, Windows Server 2012 R2 standard or Windows Server 2012 R2 data center, Windows Server 2008 R2 standard with SP1, Windows Server 2012 R2 standard or Windows Server 2012 R2 data center. Windows Web Server 2008 R2 with SP1. Windows Server 2012 R2 standard. Windows Server 2012 data center. Windows Server 2012 R2 data center. Windows Server 2012 standard. Um, Windows Server 2012 R2 standard. Or Windows Server 2012 R2 data center. Hyper-V. Server 2012, Hyper-V Server 2012 R2, Windows Storage Server 2012 Standard, Windows um, Storage Server 2012 R2 Standard, Windows Storage Server 2012 Workgroup, Windows Storage Server 2012 R2 Workgroup. So um, I'm going to get here today for this video with Server 2012. Um, if you'd like listening, please consider like, sharing and subscribing. Thank you.